Anyway, my name is Robert Stover. I work for Bright Computing. Um, and this presentation that I'm going to give is very short. It's only like seven minutes long. So you guys are in luck. I've got like three slides. Um, usually when I give the Bright Cluster Manager presentation, it takes about an hour, sometimes longer, depending on how many questions get asked. And um, if you'd like to follow that up with a live demo on another, another meeting, we're not going to do that today. But without further ado, uh, let's get started. So Bright Cluster Manager um, is cluster management software that makes it easy to install and configure high-performance computing clusters and then uh, efficiently manage them over their entire lifetime. Uh, this is where we, this is where our bread is buttered. This is, you know, what we do. Um, and as of recently, we've decided to, we've been approached by several of our customers at various uh, presentations, either prospects or existing customers saying, hey, what about Lustre? And, you know, previously, up until recently, we've had to say, well, you know, we really don't interact with the storage. But uh, now we can, we can say otherwise because we do have an integration with Lustre, which is what I'm going to show you about here today. Um, so... Bright Cluster Manager uh, is much more than uh, a Lustre management tool. It's cluster management software that's been designed and written from the ground up to be just that. So it's been engineered to be a cluster management solution. Lots of times um, uh, we run across customers that have um, created something. They've put something together. We call it the toolkit approach. In fact, uh, there's other cluster management solutions that are built on, cluster on the toolkit approach, such as Rocks or uh, platform cluster manager, for example. And what they do is they take a Linux distribution and then they take an, um, you know, some open source tools such as a provisioning engine, a, a configuration management tool, a monitoring tool, a reporting tool, and they uh, integrate it all together with scripts and uh, various patches and whatnot and uh, make it all work, which is fine, except that there's a lot of, dist lot of uh, problems with that approach uh, when it comes to supportability over the long term. Uh, you know, people leaving the company, people moving on to other jobs, and also um, the upgradability of the system, and also the, um, the the brittleness of the system that ends up having is dependent on certain packages all, uh, you know, uh, not conflicting with each other, shall we say. Uh, and so um, there's a couple of other problems with it, too, which is that uh, each one of these tools that people put together have different command line interfaces, perhaps different web interfaces. Um, lots of times they use different databases, so you may end up in a situation where you have multiple SQL databases running on your head node. They, there's multiple daemons that they run on each of the compute nodes. Each one of those daemons is sucking up CPU resources, causing interrupts, basically taking up the resources, which are the reason that you have the HPC cluster to begin with. Uh, so we don't do that. We have one single daemon that runs on each one of the compute nodes. The same daemon runs on the head node, and that daemon provides all the cluster management functionality. Um, within Bright Cluster Manager. Uh, image management. So Bright Cluster Manager is also uh, departs from the norm by offering the ability to have multiple different images. So you can have uh, an image that's, uh, let's say, CentOS 5, perhaps RHEL 6.2, Scientific <coughs> Linux 5, SUSE 11, SP2, or SP1, excuse me. Um, so you can have as many different images as you want. There's no limit. Uh, and um, people generally use these to uh, create an environment where they have different uh, different types of machines uh, for whatever reason, where they could be legacy images uh, or they could be cutting edge, either way. Uh, and we use that with our Lustre, in Lustre integration as well. Um, the Bright Cluster Manager images are um, actual directories on the head node. So if you go to the image directory and you do a listing of that directory, you'll see what looks like a standard Linux file system, right? You'll see temp, var, user, root, all your usual suspects are there. Uh, in fact, it's an exact replica of the file system, uh, the directory structure that is, that's going to be created on the nodes that are using that sh those images. And when you want to install software or remove software, for that matter, uh, from the nodes that are using that image, all you do is you uh, change into that directory, and then you use the standard system admin tools that you're already familiar with using, such as yum, rpm, make, make install, uh, or you can just do a change root and uh, run the installer for an application, let's say, or you can just copy files into that directory. So it's, it's very easy to use. Uh, and then once you get the software in that directory that you want, then you just execute a single command or press a button in our GUI, uh, either way, and you push those changes out to the machine. So there's no need to rebuild the entire machine. We basically just sync the dif di difference between what's in the image directory and what's on the node already. 
Uh, we do support multiple workload managers. Uh, we find that uh, many, of our, many of our customers and prospects already have a, a significant script infrastructure. They have preferences on which workload manager they want to use. Uh, we support all of them. Uh, well, I say almost all of them. All the popular ones, for example, Slurm, uh, Grid Scheduler, aka Sun Grid Engine, uh, PBS Pro Torque, Torque with Moab, Torque with Maui, uh, Platform LSF, and now, as of tomorrow, Open Lava, which is an open source version of LSF. When I say we support them, I mean we install them, we configure them, so as soon as your cluster is installed, the workload manager is also up and running, ready to run jobs. So it's very slick. Really has nothing to do with this particular talk, but I wanted to give you a, a flavor of what Bright is before I talk about the, the, um, the luster pieces that we've added. Um, rich extensible monitoring, so w um, that same cluster management daemon that I mentioned earlier that resides on each of the compute nodes, it collects metrics. It collect and it also runs health checks and it also performs actions. So those are the three components of our monitoring framework. We have 136 metrics, not counting the luster metrics, that are um, sampled right out of the box. Uh, we also have 22 health checks and uh, 11 different actions that can be configured if a metric exceeds a threshold or a health check fails, for example. Um, not only do we have the rich framework right out of the box, but it's also e incredibly extensible. If there's some kind of metric we're not collecting or some health check we're not running or some action you think that we need to add, uh, well, you can actually easily add it yourself. We provide templates and uh, it's quite simple. And there's, uh, uh, okay, so automated notif notification and fault recovery. So there are three components to the health management framework. One is metric. So a metric is a script or a binary that collects a number. It's either an, an integer or a floating point number. Uh, a health check, on the other hand, is a script or a binary that checks the status of an entire system. So it returns pass or fail, something that's either working or it isn't working. And then an action is, well, it's an action that you can configure to be automatically run if a metric exceeds a threshold or a health check were to fail. Actually, there's a lot of other conditions you can figure them on, configure them on as well, uh, but those are the basic ones. Oops. Oh. Okay. So this is a, a slide here. We're talking about the flexible image management. I mentioned that we can have multiple uh, software images. Uh, this is super useful if people want to install new packages. They can make a clone. We have a command that does that from our, our shell application. We also have a button that does that from our GUI. It makes an exact copy of a given software image. You can install your packages or your new software in that, and then you can provision some nodes using it and uh, test it, right? And if it doesn't work, then you can undo what you've done. You don't mess with your golden image, in other words. It's very hard to shoot yourself in the foot uh, using this approach. We can also, by the way, make images um, from an existing machine. So if you have an existing machine, you go on to it, install your software, you can save that stuff back to um, back to the image. How am I doing with the time? You got it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I was getting the eye from Steve. Uh, okay. Uh, we do use the WAM Cloud RPMs, and we can configure the nodes to either sync or not sync with a given software image. Uh, this is a picture that shows some of the metrics that we've collected. Uh, we do collect um, 12 different luster metrics. Uh, you know, things like uh, files free, files used, um, uh, cache hit ratio, bytes in, bytes out, etc. Uh, you can simp it's simple to add your own metrics if you don't think we're collecting enough or to add additional health checks. Uh, finally, you can associate actions with uh, metrics exceeding certain thresholds or uh, health checks failing. If you can put on as many actions as you want in there. And uh, there's so much more, you know, I can't possibly tell you in five minutes, but uh, come out to our table. We have a table out here in the uh, foyer. We'd like to talk to you. If you have any questions, uh, we're around. Thank you very much.